This very moment we live. So, you know, it's a new year, so get in the moment. Put all the things in the past, mm -hmm. leave them there, mm -hmm. look to the future. Mm -hmm. um, the future looks good. I mean, you got to rethink your thinking. You know, the things that we see and the things that we hear are small things compared to the way we think. You yeah. got to change your thinking and realize that how you think will determine what you see mm -hmm. and how you hear things. Let's hear the things of the future. Folks, it looks great. So I want everybody to get on the board and let's get into 2019 and do things that um, and put God in the mix and go places. Amen. All right. That was and good. Go places. And go places. Go places we've never been. Most oh, places. wow. That's great. That's yeah. great, Joe. All right. Well, hey, we're going to ask uh, Marcus, you got anything you have new to say for 2019? You got before we know, move on. I don't on. know if it's new or not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a thought process of this that, you know, my 2018 wasn't a bad year. So that I'm just wanting to continue the things that uh, are going forward and continue to um, build on new opportunities mm -hmm. and take advantage of those opportunities as they come my way. That's and right. I think that's uh, something that I want to make sure that uh, my family and those that are close around me are able to do as well. When they see an the opportunity, go ahead and seize it. That's right. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what I did in 2018. So I'm not really, I guess I'm moving past that last year that we just kind of moved out of and going to 2019, of course. But uh, I'm building on my, my yes. progression that I've made. Yes, you know, sir. That's I don't right. have to start over and reinvent anything. I'm just keeping moving yeah. forward. And I think that's, that's been right. the most that's beneficial right. thing for us. Right. Even oh, starting yes, out. Yes, yes. Okay, Miss Monica, you got something fresh off the press for 19? Um, just be intentional. Everything that yes. you do, be intentional and just be authentically, you know, um, yourself. Yes. So that's uh, right. That's right. I mean, that that can go for any year, right? Yes. 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 Right. yes. <laughs> be intentional. Most definitely. And so it's mm -hmm. important that we are intentional. Yeah. And the thing she said most important, the intentional part, is be yourself. Mm -hmm. Be yourself. Because when you can be yourself, your life counts. Yeah. And that's basically, and you want that. You're not trying to be anybody else. Mm -hmm. You get, you are who you are. Yeah, because there was only one created like you. Yes. So. That's right. That's right. That's is that what right. you teach your girls? That is what I teach my girls. <laughs> <laughs> I teach my girls, yes. That's true. Embrace that's right. everything right. about you. All right. Tell me about that program. Man. I have a program called I Was Once You, the letter U, now Y-O-U. And it oh. is a faith-based mentoring um, program that I started. Um, actually, it's been two years already. Wow. Wow. In 2017. So and I started, I did my first Youth Girls Conference in 2017. And uh, by the grace of God, I had almost over 100 girls show up. Wow. It is a free conference that I do every year. And it's basically, I started it because I am a product of Fort Worth ISD and a Fort Worth. <laughs> you laughing, Marcus. <laughs> Hold on. Not, not too much. No, <laughs> but you know, I am a product of Fort Worth ISD and I'm a born and raised Fort Worth native. And so I come from a background of low income. My mom and dad were addicted to drugs and alcohol wow. um, in, in and out of prison for majority of my life. So I was just a lost, broken girl. And by the grace of God, I had a mentor that um, that I met at 13 and she changed my life, you know, for the better. And I just I just made a vow, even though I tried to fight it for the longest, that when I grew up, um, when I grow, grew grow when I grew up right. that I was just going to give everything back to these girls and just let them know that I can relate I was that girl who got kicked out of school I was that girl you know whose science teacher refused to teach her I was that girl who fought a lot I was that girl who was broken I was that girl you know who had um, boyfriends you know and did things that you're not supposed to do until you get married so I was a girl and I, and I encouraged my girls to just you know live in the moment and just realize that you're not the only one and right. by the grace of God I made it out and so can you so that's my that's why my program is called I was once you Excellent. Wow, I yes, think that's a program. beautiful, yes, beautiful. Yes, yes. I know yes, God yes. gave it to you. He d I was laying in the bed on my pillow, and I remember <laughs> I went to a conference that Sharice Dickerson um, did mm -hmm. called Shine, mm -hmm. and I was just sitting back looking, and I told my husband, I was like, I can do this. I'm like, we need this here in Fort Worth because um, – 
her conference is out in Irvine. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I haven't heard of anyone who has done a conference, you know, in the Dallas, I mean, the Fort Worth Arlington area. And I was like, I'm going to do this conference, you know. So I um, spoke to my husband about it. He was like on board. And I was like, Lord, I need a That's name. Good. And I promise you, I'm not trying to be deep. But it literally was, I was one shoe. The letter right. U, not yeah. while yeah. you. Because I can relate because I was one shoe. Yeah, that's I was that broken girl. I was that disrespectful girl. I was yeah. once you. Yeah. So. Wow. Amen. Wow. Yeah. And so w once you go through that journey of being you, once you, you can help pull those who were once you into mm -hmm. who you are now. Mm -hmm. Yes. To spend that is, it off. That is so true. And even adults, you know, basically I was one shoe, even though it is for at-risk girls, anyone who has overcame anything, you right. know, can be considered I was one shoe. Sure. If you're a male and we're actually getting ready to <coughs> launch our boys, um, I was one shoe this That's year. Good. So be Amen. on the lookout for that. I'm really excited. We're going to do a boys conference. And so, but yeah, anyone can be I was one shoe. Right. Anything that you have overcome and came out That's of, right. whatever right. your addiction was, whatever your, you know, your shortcoming was, whatever your fault was, you can be I was one shoe. Right. Any testimony that you have, anyone can be I was one shoe. That's oh, awesome. Definitely. So where do you get most of you, the young ladies? You know what? Um... Sometimes I think they just find me, but really just like out if I'm at the mall, I, now that I'm looking at Six Flags, I remember I met three young ladies um, a couple years ago, and I was just talking to them, right. you know, just in a line like, hey, like what y'all doing, what y'all right. got going on. So right. anytime I see a youth and that I just really, I mean, that I can just see past the... Right. The, the toughness, you know, right. and thinking that all that, and I just be right. like, girl, sit down. Let me mm -hmm. let me yeah, tell right. you something. Like, <laughs> you're not no, you're not. yes, you are not. You know, and just love on them. So really, just out yeah, and about. Right. You know, I'm 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 freshly still new, right. so I don't like really like go out scouting. But any time right. that I see a youth that I can really, you know, like pour into, right. you know, I just I just take that opportunity That's and right. just That's we right. could be in the mall at Six Flags, right. where, wherever the case may be, so wherever no, I'm led. It's no general. No, it's really right. not no general because. I think my niche, like I said earlier before we came on um, online, I think my niche would, is going to really be like conferences. Sure. And so, like some of my goals this year is to get into these schools, mm -hmm. you know, these a lot of your people. Yes, right. mm -hmm. to get into these schools and introduce a curriculum, you know, that can help that them, right. you know, because I feel like we pull these, you know, kids out of classes, you know, for like speech lessons, you know, or you know, if they have like a. Um, some kind of disability or something like that. We pull them out to give right. them that time. So let's pull these girls out of these classrooms, you know, to help them with their mental state. Yeah. You pull know, them out for everything else. Yes. Yeah. yeah, pull them out for you know, give yeah. me about thirty minutes, you know, and I guarantee you, if you give get them in my curriculum into my program, we can deal it's not the teacher that this girl is mad at. You like right. she didn't wake up like, Okay, well how can I disrespect my teacher today? Right, right. So let's deal with the behavior aspect sure. of it, you know, and the, the demographics of it is kinda leading into my topic today, like how can we reach you know the the parents of these at risk kids. Sure. You know, so it's it's a lot in there. So what you're saying, really, what you try to do is pull them out of the general public. Yes. In a private. Setting. Yes, and give them, you know, like I have like a, it's a 12 week curriculum, and like certain different weeks. Like the first week, I believe, is triggers. Right. So we're going to realize, okay, mm. there's something that this this teacher has done that triggered this kid and it has nothing to do with this teacher right. nothing at all to do with this teacher it could be you know the way that they talk to them you sure. know okay remind them of an abusive relationship you sure. know at home so right. it's like right. let's deal with that let's right. deal with the it's root a secondary of it. thing yes right. most definitely so yes yeah. yes 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 so not to cut you off or anything because you got a flow going on but i just want to no, engage everybody so we can share 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 everyone out on facebook that is watching us on our page yes. uh it's a family fair radio show can you please share because we're talking about some very crucial topics mm -hmm. that will help all of us it doesn't matter if you're a parent a grandparent a mentor auntie uh, auntie <laughs> uncle uh you know like uh, i believe monica said it takes a village it does. Uh, even for adults yes. Yes. so you know we're, we're not all grown right. yet right. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I just wanted to let everybody know if you are not listening to us on our Facebook live or on someone else's page you can always connect with us through Fishbowl Radio Network which is www.fbrn.us uh -huh. in the blue stream the blue and stream. as we go yeah in the blue stream <laughs> I told um, I, I told Carlos today 
or Victor, we might have to make another bowl because because we, <laughs> we're growing. Our wave is getting pretty big, yes. and uh, as you will see. Um, Coming out in February, we have a lot of new things for uh, all of our family out there in the listening audience. So just stay in tune because you have some surprises coming. Also, later on in the show, we'll open up the line so you can call in and ask questions of either Marcus or Monica. And that number where you can reach us is area code 214-431-5062. So I just wanted to get everybody engaged. Also, I wanted to shout out to all of my civil servant family out there we're holding on we're holing on to God's <laughs> yeah. changing hand, I'm changing but, hand and believing that this <laughs> government is going to open yeah. and I you know that the mouth doesn't shut and they get you I back pay yeah. <laughs> you know because I called Wells Fargo today right. about my mortgage I said, I said I'm going to hit the early bird I said this Aww. man shuts us down any longer our president um, you know, we all we do have other um, recourses that we can go around and get things done. So mm -hmm. thank God for uh, opportunities and thank God for favor. Oh, yes, <laughs> the Lord for favor. So yes. a big favor. Lord, thank you. So Marcus. Yes, ma'am. I know you've been on the show before, and some of our uh, listening audience might not have heard from you before. So can you give us a little overview about? What God is doing for you um, as far as your career and your business, what you're doing. Doing a lot of things. Um, I'm a therapist. <laughs> I'm a social worker, chemical dependency counselor. I work with kids and families with issues, if you will. And I've been doing this for, I guess, to 2008. Mm -hmm. And my focus has been trying to get people to uh, know that change takes time and it takes time to That's change right. That's right. and getting that into people's hearts and mind it has been a I guess a trying effort at some points because some people get in these stuck points in their mindset yes. and it causes them to stay in the um, the foundation or the core beliefs that they were brought up in and it's hard mm -hmm. to shift that thought process without continuing intervention so I try to provide that for them. So uh, I do therapy at a local hospital in Tyler, Texas. Well, I do therapy now. I work in the ER. And I do therapy in a private practice that I have in Tyler, Texas as well. I see uh, kids from age 12 and up and adults as well. And when I, what I have figured out was listening to her talking about her girls' program is that these girls or boys, they grew up to be men and women mm -hmm. with these issues, mm -hmm. if yes, you will, yes, because yes, they don't yes, deal yes, with yes. these issues. Yes. So yes, yes, we yes. get them, and then they have children. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I <laughs> get them, too. Oh, yeah. They grew up with these issues because their parents have not dealt with it. And I think there's something that she's going to kind of touch on today. How do we reach the, yeah. this family core? And, and when they come into my office, I'm trying to break down this this uh this sequence of events that's happened over time that is difficult for people to let go of wow. and using wow. some cotton behavior therapy interventions reality therapy some spiritual principles to incorporate into uh people's lives has been the thing that i've been gifted with to kind of help people to see something different something yes. new something enhancing mm -hmm. something purposeful you know in yeah. their lives and mm -hmm. And um, God has given me the wisdom to kind of listen and, and hear things and begin to give them feedback toward uh, that growth pattern and how that process takes time right. for them to get to, you right. know. And letting go is hard, but you right. know, but it's not impossible, right. you know. And right. I think that's yeah. the key principle of change, sure. you know, knowing sure. that you can make it through anything right. that have come your way. You just got to know that it's not, it didn't come your way forever. It just came your way for a season. Yes. For a season. You know, not a lifetime, just, right. yeah. just for a season. season. So changing that core belief of thought process is one of my things I've been kind of working on for uh, several years yes. with, with people you know mm -hmm. so I, I love to talk to people in small groups as well as I do a lot of classes as okay. well anger management I help people Ooh, think about deal, dealing with the, the shoplifting class that they, they, they don't know that you can become more of a kleptomaniac in your thought process if you do really? things habitually yeah. Yeah. and oh, you don't wow. really address that reason or that impulsivity that's causing you to do this behavior sure. mm -hmm. just think that uh, I didn't want no big deal but why are you taking one a big deal so we do a lot of mm -hmm. comparisons to what behaviors at home and reference to comparison with other people's stuff, if right. you will. That's so right. we do a lot of domestic violence classes for men who have issues with controlling and dominance in the relationships, trying to get them to see things differently and how they have been 
probably taught from a, yeah. a young lad right. until they become an adult, and it's wow. hard to break those cycles sometimes. Yeah. So my hands are involved in a lot of things that are creating change, and that's right. what we're about. So as I work on them, I work on me. Yeah. You know, so, oh, yeah. and that's that process of change that I've been looking at for me. Well, good. That good. is good. You got a couch in your office? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it is. Yeah. In there. It is one in there. We might need a uh, <laughs> therapist. Yeah, therapist. Yeah, a little therapist. We might need an appointment. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, when I hear you say that um, it's hard to um, change that mindset. So you're saying basically a, a conditioned mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. you're trying to change. And, and in that process... Um, it, the process is to get them to admit there's a problem. Then you can mm. start a resolution. Is that is that really what that is mean? true? And a lot of people mm. know that they have problems. Even the children know that there was a problem. Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't know how to verbalize what right. the problem is or how it's really affecting me. All I know is I don't like what I'm dealing with. Right. right. And right. I want the situation to change. And this one thing about people in general is that. When you are trying to help them outside of uh, where they're at, right. you have to let them know that the situation in itself may not ever change. Yeah. Right. However, you have no right. no uh, no recourse but to change. change. That's that's true. True. So you have to change regardless of things around you stand just like they are. Right. Mm. You know, and that's the imbalance. You know, they they talk. We <coughs> talked about this word I was going to talk about today. This homeostasis. You know, some people function well in dysfunctionality. Mm. When they get better and they get back in this dysfunction, they don't like it because it throws them back. Back off balance. Yeah. Right. You know, now the family wow. don't understand this change that they've created, That's so they don't want them around because okay. this is not us. Right. You know, right. us is so yelling, screaming, right. throwing right. things. Yes. Right. Yes. So we have this indifference that becomes mm -hmm. a part of this family cycle, so you end up separating yourself. Right. Now, mm -hmm. the problem is, I believe, that some people don't like leaving mom and dad behind. Right. However, I have to serve notice. If mom and dad are, are not about my new balance, my new coordination and direction, I have to leave them behind for a season. That's right. That's right. That's right. Right. Yeah. And hopefully one day they'll catch in where I am yeah. and join me. If not, I can always say hello because I have family in, in Dallas. You know, I have family in Tyler. I don't see all the time, but I still love them from a distance. That's right. right. That's right. And so, uh, Marcus, when you say that about change and you might have to, you know, put the pause button on them for a season, do you think that because of the changes that would happen with, within you, the changes that happen within you, will then affect their change to want to change in, in your direction of where you the are possibility. right possibility. That's yeah. possible. It's not always guaranteed because people have to come to their own time of change. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Whatever right. that is. If right. this mom and this daughter, this son are having issues with uh, living together in the same household and uh, the kid turns 14, 15, wants to move out maybe with the other parent or go live with a friend and mom does not understand that but they don't see that this this pattern, this, this baseline they've always had as a core belief has shaped this person right. inability to want it anymore mm. they can't wow. see it right and until right. they change it That's you know right. oh, okay. and yeah i mean your topic hits right on too you know how do we reach that parent that don't see that this kid is trying to change yes. what they've been dealt yes. this right. hand you know right. yes. what do you think about that i'm still trying to learn actually i i, I often i mean not to be too insensitive i often struggle with parents who be like oh well she's got a bad attitude but I've heard that. I'm like, but her attitude is what she sees at home. That's right. And so I oftentimes talk to my husband because he's a youth minister. I'm like, well, babe, how can we reach these parents? Like what? Like, is there some programs that they can do? You know, and usually a lot of times when you, you know, talk about therapy and counseling, of course, you know, it costs money. But I'm pretty sure there's, a you know, so many resources out there for people if they truly, really, you know, wanted the help that they can get it. So I think, you know, as parents, you know, even I found myself at times, you know, we can be like hypocritical, especially the demographics, you know, that I mentor girls in. It's just like, OK, well, they see one thing and then, OK, well, but you telling them they shouldn't do something That's else. Exactly. Okay, like you shouldn't be talking to boys, but you living with a man who's not even your husband, right. or or okay, or you shouldn't be doing this. But like, okay, you just 
you shouldn't cuss your teacher out, but she just saw you come to the school and cuss her teacher out. That's right. So it's like an oxymoron. It's just yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. this model of behavior. Yeah. You know, what I see is what I do. Yeah. You know, so that, yeah. that verbiage that we used to say, do as I say, not as, as I, I do, do, don't apply. Yeah. No, it does no, not. No. And so I am still no. searching, you know, for these answers. Like how I was talking to a friend today, and she was just saying, um, maybe join in with them, you know, to see, okay, like, hey, like, I'm on your team. You right. know, like, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to judge you. I want you to know that I care about your child, you know, just as much, you know, as you do. Right. And a lot of times, especially with a said our culture you know it's just like a generational you know thing that just that just goes on you know even when it comes to finances like okay we're just automatically talk okay well when it's income tax time you know like hey that's when you're gonna get all this stuff but no why not put this income tax you know into the savings or yeah, why right. not pay off some debt you right. know but it's just like how can we and i think it goes back to if we change what you were saying earlier mr joe if we change our mindset because yeah. our actions will be changed by yeah. when we change the way that when we, we think, think. Most definitely. And how can we get them to think differently if all they see and all they know is just the streets or if it's, you know, the hood or if it's just, you know, just dysfunction? Yes. And so that's the, the battle that I often struggle with. It's like, what do you do? You just pick up everyone, you know, out of Eastwood and just try to move them to Arlington. I, um, I'm an intervention specialist at Kennedale, and I have a lot of students who come from, like, Stop 6, which is, like, you know, the um, a part of Fort Worth that's, like, really hood. And right. so they come into this area, and I tell them all the time, like, you're not about this life. Right. Like, this... Uh, area, this Kennedale area is so different than the Fort Worth area. It's like you can't come over here and still doing the same thing mm -hmm. because what's happening is you're getting um, in trouble. You're getting suspended. And like a lot of teachers, sorry, they can't relate to you because they have not been through it. Right. That's, that's most definitely true. And that's why it's hard for them to relate yes. to the students. You know, I deal with a lot of kids in my private practice as well. I have to tell them the same thing. Right. You know, sometimes you are misunderstood because you don't think you're being heard. That's yes. Right. Absolutely. You know, yes. 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 Well, that's change that's how that's you that's say what you need to say. Yes. Yeah, right. I tell my kids the same thing, too. Right. I say, I don't understand. Uh, and all that's that's right. I say, use your words <laughs> and not your yes. behavior. That's right. Yes. That's right. Now, because you can, you, can, you, can, you can get more things done if you can be able to say what's going on with you. Yes. Because the balance, even in my house, is that we don't yell and scream. That's right. Right. Amen. So if they're you know in a... Uh, confusion in their thought process. My goal is to get them not to yell and yes, scream, to get yes. their view out of right. the yeah. words out. And I challenge. I said, "Oh, we don't do that here, do we?" Said, "No." I said, "So tell me what you need." Yes. Mm -hmm. you know? Could it be? Could it be um, the communication when a child feels that that they're not being heard? Is it because of the response? from that adult like possibly my language might not line up or the same vernacular right. is different from what a teenager would use teachers have that in inability to do that oh, that's that's right. they have this program one they, more time mark the teachers have the inability <laughs> to do that yes. they teach a program entirely that you know they try to teach pe the teachers how to conform their teaching style to the student students learning style right. yes. whatever that is right. you know because some students are not sitting in the classroom no. orderly they want to get up and move yes. the Montessori schools do that a lot they let the mm -hmm. kids kind of take the shoes off get on the floor they you know do well. things and yes. and they learn differently that's right yes that's and right. i've learned that kids actually love structure yeah Kids love structure. It's like, okay, the kids want structure, but the adults, like, how can we get them some structure in their lives? I'm, Marcus, what's your tag? They need to come see you. Yeah. Like, I just, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's a challenge, and I don't know. Um, I really, it just makes my heart sad because yeah. I feel like, you know, a lot of the time, like you said, a modeled behavior. It's like right. these kids are only doing, you know, what they yeah. see. And I think that's one of the reasons why, like, I have a goddaughter, you know, like, her home is very chaotic. So when she comes to my home, it's, you know, like, very peaceful, sure. you know. And I show her, you know, yeah, the dynamic yeah. of what a family, you know, like, looks, looks like. like. Mm -hmm. You know, so if she can move in with me today, I'm pretty sure she would. Yes. So she literally, I remember taking her home last Sunday, and her attitude was just bad. I mean, just, and I asked my husband, and I was just like, well, what is wrong with her? He was like, well, you know what's wrong with her. The same thing that you did, because when my mentor, my god sister now used to drop me off at home on Sundays my whole attitude would just shift yeah this was about to change yes yeah, because absolutely. I knew I had to go back into <laughs> realism yeah I mm -hmm. knew I had to go back into this dysfunctional home so I'm yeah. just like wow. lord yeah. and I you know I met I, her mom hung out with us a little bit you know on Christmas and I was just looking I was just like how can I because I'm still learning you know how to be tactful you know and mm -hmm. how to 
Because with the girls, I can be raw and uncut. You know, with an adult, we might like don't. I don't want to be disrespectful, but because they don't, you don't want. They don't want you to think. You don't want to think that you're trying to tell them how to raise. Yes, their kids, that's but I really saying. am. But I'm not though. But right, right. I'm just trying to give you some tips because if you knew what your kid was telling me, yes, you know, right. like you would. You would be aware and just be like, well, man, I need to like get my stuff together. That's right. right. So, I the conversations are very hard, and mm-hmm. I've talked to adults, adult clients, and they bring their parents with them. So you have this a 23, 20, 24 year old person coming in with their parent to a mm-hmm. counseling session, and their parent is still babying them like wow. they're 12, yeah. 13, 14 mm-hmm. years of age. I'm telling the parent to step off. That's right. <laughs> I am literally step telling out. them to step yeah. off and stop trying to control mm-hmm. this person's decision making. Because if they're going to make this decision, but they're afraid that you're going to cut them off financially, so yeah. they're they're control. they're going to sneak and do it. Yeah. So change is not going to happen because no, they're, they're already knowing they're that gain. they're doing it for a some, mon- some monetary yeah. gain. It's yeah. not right. really true right. change. That's mm-hmm. right. the true change comes from within. Yes. yes. Right. 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 Let them go through their consequence. You know, so they can come to a realization that this is not something that they want in their life and change will begin to develop in them. However, if we keep rescuing, right. mm. change don't usually happen. Yeah. You know, it's like my mom used to do for me. She said, my son would never do that. I'm like, my ear like this. I done already <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for Thank appreciate, you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yes. But yes. I did do it because my mindset was there. She just didn't know that it was doing it. My, mm-hmm. my behavior was yeah. actually right. doing it right. yeah. until it started coming out more. So sure. she starts, I'm like, man, you've been doing this. Like, so yeah. do you think they're, um, <laughs> I might be telling them. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, okay. When mothers have sons mm-hmm. and sometimes I, and I have two sons and I have a daughter. So sometimes my daughter would say, Oh, you and your boys, Aww. you know, and like, you always do things for your boys, <laughs> you know. I I don't know if it's that silver that sibling uh, rivalry, sib- yeah, sibling yeah. rivalry, or is it because, you know, um, sons and moms have that special, you know, relationship, Bond, and the fathers and the daughters have a special relationship sure, sure. in some situations. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, sometimes they can pick up on, on right. mannerisms that parents might do and might give a little bit more leniency towards you know one child or sex or whatever sure. because of that mm. relationship and sometimes i guess we need feedback right <laughs> oh, yeah. like, let me go and get this free counseling session right. 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 we need some feedback to say uh, uh, uh. we shouldn't uh. do that yeah having balance is very important yes you know it is. However, I say this, being consistent is mm-hmm. more important. Yes. That's yes. Right. That's if you're right. not consistent, kids read it. That's right. Even the adult kids, mm-hmm. even yeah. the spouses, they read it because right. you're not consistent. And, and dealing with anyone with these um, behaviors that we don't like, mm-hmm. if we're not consistent in what we're requesting from them, they're not going to be consistent in giving us what we need as Absolutely. well. Right. Yeah. You know, right. And that's going to create the change looking forward. Even when we're trying to reach the parents, if the parents, if we give them information, we're going to talk to the kid for, I don't know, this, this period over here a week. Maybe yeah. the parents reach one time and I gave them the same tool. But if the parents try it one time and then say, well, this stuff doesn't work, right. you know, because they're not repetitious. Right. right, right. And the thing I understand about repetition is that the more you do it, the more often it's going to work. Sure. Yeah. It's like swinging yeah. a bat. It's yeah. like a car's engine. Yeah. RPMs, the more it turns right. over, the That's faster right. it goes. Yes. Mm-hmm. The less right. it turns over, the the slower it goes so you think of the transition and that aspect of how the information needs to get in and be perpetually applied on a daily basis that's right to create the change looking for and that's going to give you this balance as well inside this household because when a person gets better that's we consider the problem person yeah Mm -hmm. something shifts in that household as well somebody else is going to assume the sick role yeah that's right somebody else is going to start having issues yeah because our family and how it used to operate has not been functional. It's been dysfunctional. That's but this right. is what I've known. Right. Now, you get yeah. better, like, something ain't right around here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's too quiet. You know, yeah. somebody needs a scream, yeah. you know, right. or whatever. And we create this dilemma not even knowing it. Wow. So I would say, like, the right. adults would need a mentor then. So yeah. it's like the, yeah. the kid have a mentor and then the adult, you know, have yeah. a mentor. Like I have someone one. who walk yeah. out, you know, life with them. Yeah, most definitely. It's almost like a life coach. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 
yeah. you, you work with this person to kind of work on their core beliefs. Right. That because, the, again, we look at the person that this, this parent was the kid who never dealt with their kid issues. Right. Uh, with their parent. Right. And now they've grown up. And so I'm not going to let my, my, be like my mom and dad with my kids, but I become just like them because I never worked on my issues. That's right. That's good. You know, right. My uh, hurts. Yeah. You know, yeah. my disappointments, my letdowns, my right. divorces, sure. you know, and all these other things. The relationship that broke up and I got right back into one mm -hmm. a month yeah. later, you know, yeah. so I wasn't healed. With the same but joker. I moved on. That's right. You know, yeah. and now I'm passing on to my kids because now I'm yelling, I scream, I have short mm -hmm. temper, I'm not giving them the attention they need, and they're recognizing this. That's right. right. So how should they respond? That's right. Yes. Right. Right. They they can only respond to what they're given. Most definitely. And it is, and, and generally, you know, they do what they see. Mm -hmm. The parents do. I mean, you can't tell them to go go study, and here you are. Not doing that either. Oh, you go that tell them so to read. True. You don't read. <laughs> I am call guilty. You out on that. Yeah. I'm yeah. guilty. Yeah. 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 I mean, you you, you know, you tell them to go read, and you watch the television. Yeah, most but definitely. If they see you reading, right? They'll cut the television off and read. Yeah, right. and I do that with homework with my kids. I stop doing what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Go right to the table with them and kind of All go right. through the information. Yes. And be there right there with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. I've I've mm -hmm. been guilty of that. I've um, cause I I hate reading. I'm not gonna lie. But this year I said I'm gonna get my life together and I'm gonna finish a book, just one book. You know, it might lead to before two. you write yours. You're gonna finish one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it time for break yet? <laughs> I'm about to send it out. Don't take a sip break, Miss Fed. No, no. I have to. I have trying to, to kind of. You know, this is my sister over there. Mark is right something. something. <laughs> but no, I've just been guilty. You know, because. And, it, and the only reason and not to use this as an excuse and I think sometimes we just have to be like okay well because it wasn't done for me I'm not going to do it like in, growing up it wasn't big right. you know for me to read right. Right. so now that I'm almost 33 years old I can't use it as an excuse like if I want my kids to read so my aunt taught me something that was really good she said you have to lead by example of course so when it's reading time just take about 30 minutes everybody come into the living room you get out your book and they get out their book sure. and y'all just do it you know as a Together. team because then right. you know they will see even to the smallest things of me making up my bed you yeah. know we bought a new home bless the lord in july and she was like, okay with this new room there's some new rules <laughs> i didn't make my bed up i'm sorry but <laughs> so you know even with that like it's yeah. a habit that you yes, know that we right. have to get it it's a thing ourselves. that we yes yeah, retraining yeah. ourselves so when my kids get up in the morning like hey what's the first thing you do when you get up make your bed up i'm glad they don't hold me accountable because i make sure that theirs is done but i've been falling short mm -hmm. you know i didn't i didn't get it together all 2018 but 2019 i'm gonna make my bed up starting monday because right, i go back to work right. but you know just yeah. like little things <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just like I little that things yeah. like that you yeah. know just being the example you yes. know and so right. that can teach them if they see mommy and daddy you know sitting down having yeah. bible study it's one of the things that they're right. going to pick up you know in their home and as they get you know get older like hey i saw my parents you know do this and another like we have in our home like you said also mark is that we don't raise our voice like our kids you know even if me and my husband have a disagreement like we do not raise our voice so right. i just think my kids are 11 8 and 4 like they've never just seen you sure. know me and my husband just like you know yelling back and forth you right. know at each other right. like we know how to have like a normal you know conversation Thank so you. all these things yes. are important you know yes. as this child you know is growing up yes. so you know we talk about my word again my homeostasis right mm -hmm. throw that back out there she has a very functional home, right? No one yells or screams. The, the catalyst is this. When families are like that, they have this normalcy going on. And one of our family members get uh, out of the norm. Mm -hmm. You know, the behavior that no one else is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it disturbs the rest of the family. It throws them out of balance. Yes, oh. it does. You know, and that's when we'll call that kid the problem kid. That's we'll wow. label them with whatever that thing yeah. is. And, yeah. and in yeah. actuality, you know, it's this is a family situation. Yes, it yes. It's not just this kid or the, even if it's the adult. This yeah. is a family situation that we all have to work on as a unit because we can't. Because this kid is 13, 14, about that age, and they begin to maybe smoke a cigarette or do mm -hmm. drugs or try alcohol, that they're problematic. Is that they have been caught up in some, some things that probably they didn't know anything about, but it yes. became attached to their mindsets. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then when they tried, they liked it. 
right, you know, yeah. and that was hard to quit doing. Quit Even yeah. when you get into your hormonal thing, she talked about early sexual behavior and things right. like mm-hmm. that. It's difficult to uh, stop a teenager from doing something that their hormone in their body uh, is natural. naturally. It is so natural. natural. Yeah. The Lord created so All it. you can do is teach. <laughs> all you can do is teach. Yeah. You know, and hopefully yeah. give some good direction. And right. They have to still make the right choices. Don't so mean true. that they're the bad seed. No, they don't. Yeah. You know, we see a lot of movies geared toward that. Would you have the baby? You can't live here. You got to go over here. Yeah, right. that's right. Mm-hmm. But they still going to make a choice and decision. If we have a good relationship with them, despite the disruptive thought that may come to their thinking, right. hopefully they still will trust us. Mm. That's yeah, right. right. That's yeah. the key. To tell that's the right. truth. Yeah. 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 If it's a dysfunctional family, I'm not going to trust them. I don't trust nobody. Right. right. You know, but if I trust my family, despite I make a mistake, mm-hmm. you can still come to me like the prodigal son. You can still I come home. I was just about to say the prodigal home. son. Yeah, stole her word. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 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 that's yes, so yes, definitely. That's true. Well, you know, some of our children or our teenagers, whatever age group, they come from broken homes. Mm-hmm. I mean, broken, not broken with husband and wife there, but broken meaning that the mother and the father are separated and they're going back and forth from one home, one home to <laughs> another home. And not being consistently, yes. you know, dealt with on a daily basis. True. So it kind of goes back to, I believe, what Monica was saying, that consistency when when you have a piece of normalcy in yes. your life. Yes. And you're there for that weekend. And then, oh, here's Sunday. I got to go back oh, yeah. to that way. Right. You know, how do we help our children to, you know, feel okay that, that they have experienced it and communicate to the parents like look this is what it looks like sometimes our kids have to shake us in a sense mm-hmm. and and it tell us about their experiences so we'll know that we need to change sometimes we have to become better listeners yeah that's mm. right you know they, they have a word you know that sometimes we we hear but we don't listen that's and it's right. a difference listening to respond you know and i hear a lot of things people say but am i really listening can i repeat yeah. it <laughs> can i tell them exactly what they said you know right. active listening mm-hmm. it's a challenge that a lot of people have especially with the parent mm-hmm. because as a parent the assumed ideas that i have all the information. That's right. Mm-hmm. And the reality is that I don't have all the information. No, the don't. kid does, or the other yeah. person does. And they're trying to give me the information that I need. That's However, right. I interrupt them while they're speaking. That's right. right. So I've now gave them the idea that if you're talking, your voice doesn't matter because right. mine trumps. That's right. good. But I have to teach the kid this that their opinions do matter. Yes, yes does. they do. And I have to listen to opinion. I don't have to agree. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. But I do need to listen. Listen, yes. That right. gives me an opportunity to have some leverage. Yes, right. Yeah. To help them with. Yeah. You know, my yeah. kids always ask me questions. I'm, I don't know that. Let's <laughs> Google that. You know, yeah. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but we're, we're trying to keep the conversation yeah, open. Yeah, And I right. think that's important. Right. Yeah. Keep and the dialogue yeah. flowing. Most definitely. And then the that too, Marcus, and I said it before, you're building a bridge. We already got an ocean here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Wow. We need to come and we're building a bridge. Yeah. You're listening to them, you take time. Yeah. I heard you early on in the conversation. You said you was at Six Flags, mm-hmm. and you just support the three girls. They, they was doing something. I don't know. Waiting what in line to get on the ride, the yeah. Joker. And mm-hmm. you just started talking to them. I did. And mm-hmm. you, but again. That's something that's not normal Mm -hmm. for, you know, you went in not to impress. You let them express themselves. Let them talk. Like, how are you doing today? Yeah, how are you doing today? Let me hear from you. Yeah, and it's okay if you're not doing good. Like, if it's a bad day, say it's a bad day. But you let them talk. Yeah. You took time to... To not to try to impress them. You yeah. want to hear from them. You yeah. want to hear Most that definitely. pain. Yeah. Let me hear your pain. Yeah. And that's one thing in my conferences also. Like I get people when I, I don't want to use the word scout. But like when the Lord lay people in my heart to speak to my girls. Yeah. I'm here for the deepness for the adults, but like these kids, don't come in with all these Leviticus. Like, don't come in with all these scriptures because right. it's right. going to go over the head. Yes. Let's get them yes. the basics. <laughs> yeah. What is the basics? You know, it. like the basics. Like, meet them where they are. Yes. They, Absolutely. They, they already know that. Listen, yes. they know having sex outside of marriage yeah. is wrong. Right. They are. They know smoking yeah. weed is wrong. They yeah. know cussing. They that. teach. They know all of this. Right. But how can we get them to change? You yeah. know, their mindset. You come in, and that's one thing about. Mm-hmm. me that I feel like what makes me different as a mentor I am so transparent yes. I am relatable yes. 
Was yes. Miss Monica having sex before match? Oh, yes. Lots of it. But let me tell you the consequence of it. You yeah. know, like I was a, let me, let's get to the root of it. Yeah. I was an insecure girl. You know, my mom wasn't around. That's my dad wasn't around. Yeah. You know. Those reasons. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So, Definitely. you know, so I acted out because, you know, even to this day, my mom is back in prison. And I remember writing a letter to her a few weeks ago and I posted it on my social media because I thought I was healed from that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and immediately mm -hmm. as I was ending it, love always your firstborn. I was like, oh, Lord, like, yeah. ouch. Yes. You know, so even though mom was 33 years old, there is still yes. this little yes. girl deep down inside. So even with these adults, there is still something in their childhood yes. that they have, you know, have not dealt with or that yeah. they're still right. missing. Yes, you know, their is. dad not yes. being there. A lot of women, yes. the reason why they date these men that they date because they didn't have that, you know, that example mm -hmm. or their fatherly love. Yes. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> let me get the first guy who's going to show me some attention. Mm -hmm. And I tell my girls, please don't fall for this okie doke. You are freshman in high school and you think the senior really like you girl by you're not the only one right, you're not right. the only girl that he's going to want to talk to right. even my god she's like oh mommy i like this senior i say is he a football player she's like yeah i was like don't even give him the time of day <laughs> she's like well i just want to go to the movies but you know as, as a, oh, did i just disconnect sorry but you know, as, <laughs> as an adult, I'm you know, I know, I'm I'm not, no, the, the spirit came in. Like, <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, as an adult, you know, like this is things that her mom, you yes. know, is supposed to be telling her. Yeah. But guess what? Her mom can't tell her because her mom is living with it. someone yes. who's not her husband. You know, her mom is living with someone where she's working and this. I can't say what I want to say. This young <laughs> man, you right. know, is just laying up and that's not how it's no, supposed it's to be. But not. but. Her mom is doing this because she never knew yes, or she right. don't know. So right. how do we break the cycle of, I'm just like, should we have like a big old community group like on the. Call break the cycle. <laughs> so that, that parent is going to be hard to reach. Whatever cycle it is. Yes. That parent is going to be hard to reach. It is. Because she don't want us telling her how to raise That's her exactly kid. Right, so what would you recommend, Marcus? Like I, like I told you, I don't do adults because I just feel like we don't listen. But you right. know, my husband, even though he's a youth minister, <laughs> we're going to be transitioning into doing um, young adult ministry and I was telling some of my friends today I was just like I'm not ready I, I'm let me not ask you this question it does, does when you have your conference are the parents or coming with the girls to the conference or it's just well, the girls the parents do come but I kick them out so but my first let have a <laughs> I do. I ask them to go shopping or something, only because I want the girls to, to feel, feel comfortable free. to share to with no open. judgment and yeah. stuff like that. But my first lady, shout out Virginia Crane, she recommended that I have something like a little room where these parents can see what their girls are going through. Right. And also, I was like, you know what? I am going to incorporate. Um, implement that this year to where while these girls are getting mentored to these parents you know bring some adults in like you Marcus I'm glad I met you now you're gonna come on in with all your knowledge <laughs> and so, you know you want to talk you know to these parents you know and get in their mind and let them know like all this mental stuff that's going on in them right what was your question <laughs> I'm sorry well it was gonna be related to that answer that you gave however I also uh, among ob observing them in the in the setting and mm -hmm. the talking about several things that they're going through or been through or experiencing is now to have probably a opportunity for the parents to come in mm -hmm. yes. and talk to the kids of what they didn't know That's right. Right. to bring the connection together hopefully sure. to create more of an emotional bond right. because mm -hmm. the goal is for them to understand it that I've been crying out but you hadn't been listening yes. right. Right. Yes. you know and now the yes. parents hopefully will have a responsibility to respond that I'm listening now That's yes. right. oh. you know and which like, I don't have to listen because you're in the grave or I don't have to talk to you behind a, a, a cell no, bar you know no, like no, I right. like we, we don't we don't want to have to listen like that yeah most definitely you know yeah. as I get I'm sorry me faith go ahead no 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 I was gonna um get in the middle of it and stir the pot a little bit. <laughs> so when you were saying that, I said, "Oh, so Monica, maybe you deal with the young girls, and Marcus, you deal with the parents." Teamwork <laughs> makes it. <laughs> Listen, you got all these credentials behind your name. I'm just a girl with so a high diploma and a gift. Come together. <laughs> yes, this is already kind of yeah, smoothed yeah. it out. Yes. You know, gave enlightenment yeah. because of where our mindset should be as parents. Yes, yeah. I, I'm telling you, like, should we do like a free community? Just put some lawn chairs out on the thing sure. and just like just share all this knowledge. You know, because I, I'm telling you, like, I'm gonna stop saying I don't do adults, but I, I'm a 2019 maybe. 
Oops. If we if we do kids, we do adults. Yes, because that's they, they're true. part of the transition. That's so right. true. Because I am changing my verbiage today. <laughs> Marcus do adults, and I do the that's kids. That's not changing your verbiage. <laughs> Teammate, right? <laughs> yes, I'm as a teammate. Okay, you know, okay. And make, making this transition is so important because, again, if we don't get the people on board, that's going to be with the kids the most. Yes, it's almost like right. you're dealing with teachers, of course. Yes. Teachers with the kids eight hours a day, and if we don't get them to understand that every kid is not the same that's in right. this classroom yes. setting, yes. I mean, yes, just yes, because. Yes. They may not be focusing on listening to you in the classroom. Doesn't mean that they don't want the information. That's, That's right. true. That's right. They just oh, may want it. So they may want it different. That's yeah. Right. That and so you so might have to think good. about asking them some questions. So how do you really want to get this information? Because I know you want to graduate. Yeah, I do. Yes. So what is the best way you learn right, then? Right. right. And maybe get them into a different type of setting That's that right. they can hear and learn information That's better. Right. That's yeah. right. You know, right. versus right. labeling them yeah. as defiant. Yes. Yeah, at risk. ADHD. Trouble. Most yes. of the disturbance. Most of the disturbance. Right. Yeah, yes. most definitely. Which creates right. this barrier in my mind yes. that I cannot overcome. Yes. Yeah, I'm not good enough. Right. Oh, my God. Right. And then, you know, just to take it a little further, um, in school systems, say, for instance, if you have a child or grandchild who has um, so-called a behavior problem, maybe that problem might be because... They're hurting inside mm -hmm. because their parents yeah. are not together. Mm -hmm. They're separated. Mm -hmm. But they act out in school. Then the school documents in their folder, well, this child is that, 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 that. Hey, you know, they have all I'm this open. good attributes, <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> and then they transfer and move. Oh, mm -hmm. man. That folder goes Follows with that travels. child yes. and travels with yeah, that child. Yes, so yes, does yes. that child, can they get a fresh start? When they have all that derogatory yeah. information yeah. in yeah. that folder? Yes. Yes, yes Monica. Yeah, no, I'm saying yes, they yeah, can because yeah, I was oh, a child. Okay. Okay. No, no, okay. I was just raising my hand like, yes, they yes. can. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, tell me, how did you change? <laughs> I mean, not the whole process, but give us a little snippet. I snippy. think, well, for one, my sister, who is my mentor, Tiffany um, Freeman, I really, she took the time to just really love Is me. Your sister? Yeah, that's my sister. Oh, that's my okay. mentor. You know my sister? <laughs> Hey, yeah, sissy. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> Let me say, I got a Somebody know you, but everybody knows her. But yeah, she was my mentor. You know, I met her at um, 13, and I was really, you know, she was from Arlington. I was from Fort Worth. I was very, I was just a broken, mean, rough around the edges girl. Like, she has long Pocahontas hair, and I was like, where'd you get that weed from? You know, it was just, I just had no filter. I'm still working on it to today, if y'all can't tell. But you know, I'm getting, that and got out, came a long way. But you know, like, she just loved me unconditionally, you know, and I remember she. She never once just bashed, you know, anything yeah. that I was doing. That's she right. would just be like, what do you feel like that's going to, you know, do for you? Right. She never once, you know, n never made me feel less than. Mm -hmm. And I remember taking one of my boyfriends over her sister's house. And she was like, okay, how old is he? What grade is he in? You know, so it was like little things like that. So it really was because of her, you know, and really by the grace of God. I just remember my junior year in high school, I said I had had enough. I was like, Lord, I really want to live for you. And, you know, like anything that that is going to distract me like i stopped like i started i have this is another show for everything I <laughs> <came> from. <laughs> but you know i was just doing everything before my time i was right. clubbing before you know my time like sure. you had to be 18 to get in the club i was what 14 with a fake id yeah so it's like yeah, i really i'm yeah. telling you when i tell you it is nothing but the grace of god i can give no credit in my sister no credit to nowhere else and i'm not trying to be deep you know or even things like that and even with my program these girls don't have to be saved you know i'm not coming in you know preaching you know and bashing right. them sure, but at the end right. of the day i let them know the way that I came out right. the walk. you know yeah you know the walk and so that's what it was I just remember my junior year in high school and just with the help of my mentor I wanted it for myself right. and I remember telling a girl the other day you have to want it you for want yourself, for yourself. Yeah. even as adults like we can be like whoa it's me <laughs> oh this oh that like I can easily use that excuse yes. my exactly. mom is in prison to like today mm -hmm. my mom and my sister were in prison across the street from each other months ago my sister's in a halfway house now I can easily use that excuse that I didn't have a mama I didn't have a daddy that's like right. sometimes right. we just got to grow up yes, and like do. make it happen yes, you do. and I understand you know people have different personality types right. I have you know a strong personality so I just wasn't weak mentally sure. you know but I can empathize you know with these people that are you know just realize okay you need just a little more pat right. you know just right. a little bit yeah. more encouragement right. like hey girl you got this but right. you just have to make up in your mind that I just I just wanted to be different I That's knew right. 
And even with my three children, I never miss a beat. Like, I don't fight hard to prove that I'm a good mom. That's right. It literally is just something in me. Yes. I'm just supposed to do this. Yes, that's right. it. And, and I'm I, just supposed to do it. And I think in what you're saying, see, you lead with your life. Yeah. Your life to depict and say a lot of things that you don't have to even verbalize. Mm -hmm. And your actions and all of that. When your words, your actions, and your deeds and all are one. Mm -hmm. You're one person. That's and good. And people see that. Yeah. People can see that. And that's real. I think the part of being transparent, mm -hmm. even with the young ladies, they see. You tell the story. It's your story, but you tell it. Mm -hmm. You don't go in there in scriptures and no, uh -uh. they're they, they used mm -mm. to that. And that that's a turn off. Yeah. Yeah. I right. can't need it. I'm still trying to keep up yeah. myself. Yeah. You know. Well most people, I mean, when they're going through something, I think they want to hear it from from a, somebody who's mm -hmm. been through it oh, yeah. and who can tell it's me the, the how process. to get out yeah. of it or how to get around it. It's not it. the only way to um, get the get the breakthrough, but that's right. what some people relate more to. Yeah, yeah because yeah. they can feel it mm -hmm. and they can visualize yes. your situation yes. or where you've been. So. Well, you asked, you asked this question a moment ago about transitioning from one school to another. You know, in reference to having this new start. I'll say this as well. It depends on the, rec the receiving school. Yeah. If they are going to look at the file and determine yeah. how they're going to approach the new situation. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not going to have good. a talk with you and say, okay, now that you're here, we don't do this, that, and other. Right. Or do I not bring it up and allow you to just have a fresh start? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, because if I label you, I've given you the uh -huh. stigma. I've also probably informed all the teachers. Yes. So right. Right. You know, right. I've told, some, I've told yeah. somebody. Yeah. So yeah. I've, yeah. I've gotten a disadvantage already oh, yeah. because people think that's right. without having an experience yeah. Right. that yeah. I am. That's yeah. so true, yeah. Mark. And that sets people that's up for so failure. That's you know, so she happened to have someone in, as a junior in high school that stepped in. You know, some kids might not have that. Yeah. You know, right. Right. They're, they're, they're expecting, the expectation is that school is that role. That's right. right. You know, but right. if I'm not capable of being a positive person right. despite what you've been through right yeah i'm in the wrong role that's right and that's so that's so true that you said that because the superintendent because i work for kennedy lsd he came in and he was like you know we did a little meeting it was like okay well one of what is one of the you know the negative things about your school or one thing that you will want to improve and i said teachers being able to relate to these students you know i mean and i'm not you know a whole pro black person i'm not anything like that but we only have one black teacher at our school and he's a male, so he's a coach. So it's like it's hard. So one of the teachers was like, okay, well. They don't look like me. Yeah, That's you don't look like me. And then also one of the teachers <laughs> was like, so you want me to um, give you um, a, a praise, you know, for doing something that you're already supposed to do? And she was like, well, if I'm, you know, going to speed limit, the cop is not going to pull me over and be like, hey, here go $20 for doing the right thing. And I immediately stopped. I was like, some kids need that. Some right. kids need that affirmation. Like, right. hey, like you passed this test. Yes. What's your favorite place you want to eat at? That's Right. Like they need yeah. things. Some of these kids, I'm not saying all of them, but right. you have to be able to meet them where they are. Yes, some yeah. kids, you every little thing that you have to do. Yes, you want a reward? Okay, yeah, boom, here you go. Like you have to because they are looking at you and they they're warning you. Like like I said, you know, at the beginning, they want this structure. Yeah, you they know, really so do. they're not just acting out, and you have to get <clears throat> past. Okay. I'm not saying it's right, but you gotta you gotta get past them cussing you out. You yes. know it don't I make don't it think right. You care? Yes. Why should I care? Yes. The mentality. Right. Right. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Exactly. So I'm gonna yeah. cuss you out every chance I get because mm -hmm. you're making me mad. You taking me back to a place. That's right. You know, and even when I get these kids in ISS, you know, I ask them, okay, what is the reason that you did this? That's right. You know, so granted, I understand they have over twenty some you know students in their class. They can't stop you know and be a counselor and a mom and a dad you know to each student. But at the <coughs> same time, what is one of the reasons? that you got into education right, right. you know so you think it, place, yeah, yeah so you think it's certain districts you know and I think that's why my heart you know is really for forward the ISD you know only because I'm a product of it but I know what it's like yes. I know what it's like you know to have teachers you know that really don't care and and, yes, and right. will labor you yes, and right. I tell this one girl she gets in trouble so much I say you know this is going to follow you throughout baby you in Kennedale you know it, <laughs> it's you know <laughs> yeah. if, if, if y'all know y'all know Kennedale Mansfield you, you already know I ain't got to say much more but it is going to follow you when you get to high school you're already labeled like this girl right. likes to fight how many times has she been in iss how many times has she been suspended yeah. so what i did with her i said we're going to write down just three goals what the first goal is be respectful to your teacher because for one 
this can be your mom, this can be your grandmother, this can be somebody in your family that you mm -hmm. care about. You don't have to like this teacher. That's I'm right. not saying, but but you do have to respect, respect them. Because right. when you when you just think it's so easy to disrespect people, you're gonna end up in jail and you're right. gonna have to answer to oh, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So, but once again, <clears throat> right. we had the mom coming to the school cussing the assistant principal out. Like, <laughs> y'all like. So if my mama can do it, I can do yes, it. Yes, if my mama can do it, and I'm telling you, if I could just grab these parents and just be like, listen, let me yeah. just tell you, you know, without them <clears throat> feeling like you said, Mark, yes. if I'm trying to tell you right. how to raise your yes. child right. yeah it so is. monica what is iss in school suspension so you oh, have okay. in school suspension they'll probably so give you the max will probably be three days and then yeah. you have high school suspensions where you you know you serve your time at home so, so that's like, what you do i mean yeah that's what i am a, i am I, some would say i'm an iss teacher but i don't have the credentials i am an intervention specialist but i work in the iss room that's right uh, yeah, okay. so I sit in the classroom all day, and I get different kids that come mm -hmm. in and out. Some might be in there for cussing, you know, the teacher out. You know, some right, might be in there right. for walking out of class. You know, mm -hmm. some might be in there for being, you know, disrespectful. Right. And so I'm asking, okay, why? Why did you do this? That's oh, right. I just don't like it. No, we got So I make them yeah. think, you yeah, know, and I make right. them, like, write down goals and just be like, how can we change this? Yes. Especially you being in eighth grade, baby, you about to go into high school. It's yes. going to be, it's a yes. bigger platform. Right. Like, right. how can we change it? Yeah. So you can get some of your girls right from your the situation. Mm -hmm. right? oh, yeah. you, you, referrals and what have you. Yes, yeah. ma'am. That's, that's awesome. No, do, definitely. Do you find that sometimes instead of a critic, they need a cheerleader? Oh, all the time. All the time. All the time. And, and, and that's what they probably thrive off of. Yes. Yeah, yeah she said it earlier. Yeah. That affirmation. Yes, yes. They they <clears throat> do. They need a chiller. They need someone. Even if okay, if you come from a thirty to a fifty five on the test, like that's good right. job. Yeah, you progress. Make progress. Yes. yes, you is make they slow. That's you right. not you still not passing, but you know, you, you working, make, you know, your way towards yeah, it. Bro. And I'm telling you, I think that's what's so important about this curriculum that I'm gonna try to create in the mm -hmm. fall of twenty nineteen. Like, let's deal with these girls. Like yes. you you want your teacher to be stress free right. you want these kids to stop you know um cussing these teachers out let me come into your school let yes. me just pull it up about 30 minutes yes. you know and teach them like okay we're going to figure out what's triggering you because if we know what's triggering you you know we can we can stop the disrespect That's it right. might not be overnight we right. might it might take a whole semester yes. it might not even be that year yes. but it's one of those things That's you right. know that that are being processed to realize like dang okay i, I do yeah. need to change yeah, that's right and even with the parents i think we're looking at this balance in the family. It may not even be them that's considered the problem. It could be peer pressure. Yeah. And here I am trying to impress a guy or, or another yeah. uh, mm -hmm. a girl or whoever, or even just a Something person on the same sex, a friend of mine, and I'm trying yeah. to impress them by following along. And that causes some disruption, especially when they begin to try and you like, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. meaning they, they, they pair it people against each other intentionally almost yes. mm -hmm. you yeah. know y'all were all friends now these two over here are saying we don't want to be your friend That's so right. it made you feel or experience so, this yeah. this uh rejection, rejection. so yeah. this rejection has caused you uh -oh. not to tell your mom or dad rejection oh. is a big you think? root and if we had oh these parents God. teaching them yeah. their identity you know it wouldn't even matter if these two girls are talking about you I because you know listen right. my daughter is four and i'm trying to teach her this already like yes. it don't even it don't even matter mm -hmm. just long you got mom and daddy will middle school is the toughest year and i tell these girls the girls that i mentor my church this all the time middle school is a hard three years yeah. some schools mm -hmm. too it, it is it is a rough year yeah. but these parents are not truly teaching them you uh -oh. know we have right. a call oh who's calling us <laughs> good evening this is it's a family affair hey there it's marilyn <laughs> hey hi marilyn <laughs> how are you <laughs> Hey, y'all know I couldn't stay away. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. Hey, Miss Marilyn. Hello, how you doing? Hey, y'all, this is a phenomenal show. I'm just going to tell you something. We're doing good. Marcus and Monica, y'all are flowing together so well on yeah, those yeah. conversations. Yeah, yeah. I like y'all picking. Sound like y'all been there where those kids have been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, that was that, independent and that's school always a, that's <laughs> always a good thing. Uh, Monica, I got a question for you. You know, uh, when when it comes down to parents that are watching or you know uh, trying to you know find out how do I get my child connected up to this type of a ministry, somebody that can or not ministry or, or you know or your your mm -hmm. organization or whatever. You know how do get, how do I get my daughter directed to them because you know a lot of times with parents are not able to 
the, you know, especially in a big city like Dallas, yes. they really don't know where to go. They don't know where to find people that can be as relational as you are with that. So how would we go about finding you? You know, we, we have to keep coming on the radio to find you. Where are we going to find no, you? Ma so you can. Can <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. You don't have to keep coming on the radio. Don't come on the radio. You can find me at I Was Once You on all social media tags. I Was Once You, the letter U on Facebook. I Was Once You on Instagram and even... Um, just my email address is I was once you 2017 at gmail.com but you know the world we live in now everybody is on social media so I you can I, um, you can um, DM me I will respond you can send me a message on Facebook or you can even look me up on, up under Monica Hall but yes on all social media handles you can find me on I was once you and I have a website also which is I was once you once again the letter U dot com so that's how you can find me <laughs> oh, I am accepting Tom, all new applications. Doubling her attendance this year. Openness and the transparency of a conversation. And I was listening to you. I forgot about you know when we were interviewing where you were sharing about the testimony about your mom and oh, you yeah. know the different yeah. um, you know things that you've uh, actually gone through. You sound very clear with those things. That's was right. there ever a time in your life to where you? felt maybe ashamed to talk about, you know, those those areas in life. You know, that is a good question. The answer is no. I remember when I first got married, my mother-in-law used to be like, you shouldn't be telling people all your business. Like, everybody don't need to know this. But I've never, you know, I've never felt ashamed. And I literally, I promise you, just a few weeks ago, I just stopped saying my mom was a crackhead, you know, to say that my mom was. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you, Miss Mary, stop laughing. But, yeah, you know, and just, you know, to start saying that, you know, she was addicted to drugs. Right. You know, because that just yeah. sounds, you know, more. But for the longest, I was just like, listen, my mom was a crackhead yes. she was it yeah. you know and she probably struggled you know for bipolarism you know if that's a word yeah. but she was. she was she was yeah. she was a yeah. she, yeah. she was a, you and i've learned as i got older you have functional addicts <laughs> and you have dysfunctional right. addicts right. and my mom was a dysfunctional addict but with her having me at 15 and even just going back to my root my grandmother you know we just built our relationship just within this last year so it starts way right. back this is much deeper generation. you know the, yes generation this is much deeper than my yeah, mom that's right. you know like yeah. she wasn't raised by her mom and then even goes back to my grandmother her mom died at a young age and my grandmother had my uncle you know at the age of 15 so all this stuff and by the grace of God I've been able so I was the first one to graduate from high school in my family you know I'm the first one you know to be stable you know and stuff like yeah, that but right. no Miss Merlin I was never ashamed to share my story and I will never be yeah. because it is who I am it has made me who I am and I'm that's still right. learning and I'm still growing yes. and so now I'll just say my mom was addicted to drugs yes. Okay. Well, I have a yeah. word for you. Yeah. Tell your girls the buck stops here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Right. The buck right. stops here. Yeah. Right. The buck has stopped. I love, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's I, right. I love that because I think that's what we need. That's that's mm -hmm. definitely what um, uh, it's a family affair is all about. Is because we've got all of these types of dysfunctions mm -hmm. in our homes mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's kind of like Marcus is talking about the homospaces. I think that's what he says. We're, yes. we're trying to learn how to function in these dysfunctional right. environments. Yeah. Yes. But a lot of times we cannot get past it mm -hmm. if we won't open up and share about those yes. things. You know, little Johnny's going to school and he's acting up. And I heard you saying that he's not mad at the teacher. She's not mad at the teacher. There's mm -hmm. some going on back at the house yes. that needs to be, you know what I'm saying, that needs to be dealt with. Exactly. And yes. many times we do have to open up. I was thinking about another thing that you said uh, just a few minutes ago. You know, I don't know if you guys have, um, and I know you have, but I don't know if you have uh, thought about it. You know how some girls uh, in, in some homes, the oldest child is sometimes raised by the grandparent. They're not always raised by the mother. Yes. Sometimes they're raised by the grandparent. Do you find that to be an area uh, to where it causes problems in the relationship later on because the mother has not really gotten that type of a, uh, you know, relationship Respect. with that child, and then the next child comes along and the parents are more with that child and they're not and they're not relating well with the other children. Have you ever seen that being a problem? And how do you get beyond those kinds of things? Because that may be just something generationally that they do is you know mom she always takes that first child they always raise the first child and then we don't know we don't know how to we don't know how to we don't know how to deal with them now that they're coming back home 
not not coming back home, but they're having to really be raised up by us in this house now when, you know, if y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, most definitely. I'm going to let Marcus answer that because my mama didn't, she didn't raise me and so she didn't care. I mean, so Marcus. <laughs> okay. What you say? I ain't got no answer to that. I ain't got no answer to that one. She was like, go on, keep her. That's what, thank you for raising us. Thank you. I think it, I think it continues to bring upon um, uh, a lot of um, discord, if you will, communication mm. wise. And the thing about it is this, that if people don't heal, you know, may yeah, it be the kid as good. they get older, even the parent, and forgiving themselves of what they could not do or right, had the inability right. to do. Uh, they, they find themselves beating themselves up and regressing versus progressing through a positive change. And I think that as long as we're able to not hold things over people's heads mm -hmm. and bring things up as a remembrance or a memorial, if you will, back into things that used to be, I think people will begin to continue to move past stuff. Healing is a yeah. process of a person knowing that it's not about the other person. It's about mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. individually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I do my part, the other person can stay hurt as long as they want to because I've done my part. That's yeah. right. you know, so yeah, I'm moving exactly. forward. I'm not going to allow them sure. to hold me back. Right. When it comes to these parents and this this functionality within this home that I'll let the grandparents raise you and I'm raise the younger siblings I think that now we're going to be still uh, part of this nucleus of a family and we're not, probably now more friends than a mother and a daughter or a yeah, mother and a right. son yeah, yeah, exactly. like we're friends and yeah. that doesn't really play over as well uh, good either because there's still some type of disconnect That's right. mm -hmm. you know right. Right. and until that those people heal right. and mm -hmm. ask themselves to forgive themselves and forgive this other person for what they've done to impact their lives right. is it going to continue the cycle that's right. It's almost yeah. like yeah. if I had that situation going, then I have a child, then I want my child to know their grandparents, but I don't want you to know this one. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's, take my right. yeah, it's going to it's going to create this negative dialogue. You know, but now I'm about yeah. to tell this kid why we have this negative impact versus you know what I like it. I now have good things to say because. All the bad things that have happened, I'm not living in that anymore. Yeah, I only right. have positive things, and right. they're living their lives over there. That's why we don't see them that much because they're, they're doing their own thing. I don't have the negative tone, the right, ne negative right. uh, overtures of behaviors that come out when we talk and think about them as yeah. a person. It's yeah. all about the change mentality, that's and I right. think that strengthens a person's ability to not to go backwards that's in time right. yeah. and try to relive yeah. things that they can't undo. Yeah. That's the yeah. insanity, you know. It's unrealistic yeah. and it's unstable yeah. for a person like to think that. or believe that that can ever be that. I'm gonna go undo history. Yeah. Yeah. History is done, yeah. you know. Right. Yeah. We need to make a new history. And That's a right. heel person would be like, thank you for raising my kid. A heel person would be That's like, right. thank you for yeah. stepping yeah. in yeah. Yeah. where yeah. I was not able like, to do that. Gratitude. How can I pay you back? You, you want me to come wash your clothes? Like, what you want me to do for That's you? Right. Like, what can I do for you? So, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, my mom and, and I, I think. I think some of the healing also comes when people learn how to sit down at the table and talk about stuff. You know, yes. it's not so much that you did it or you didn't do it or whatever. I think we all got to grow up and yeah. mature yeah. into places. Mm -hmm. and Maturity. And, hey, Maturity. And sit down with decide. some functional conversation. You know, right. kind of like what Marcus was saying earlier. Uh, that is, to me, that's an unacceptable form of communication, whining and doing all that kind <laughs> of stuff and blaming. Yeah. To me, that's unacceptable. Um, I think yes. we need to find a way mm -hmm. to come to the table and reason with one another. Okay, I did it. Okay, I wasn't there. I didn't do all these yes. things. Right. So that we stop throwing all these stones at one another mm -hmm. and that the families can start to heal. We, go so we here? have to yes. start in places yeah. just yeah. like this to open up that door, open up that place of communication, mm -hmm. stop hiding it, stop sweeping That's up right. under the rug. Yes. You get it. That's what I'm mad about. That's right. what I'm mad that right. you did it. Yes. You know? <laughs> That's so, so good. That is so it, good to Miss Marilyn. Because even with my biological grandmother, like I remember being eleven when my great aunt raised me and she died, and my grandmother was like, "Well, I can't take you in." You know, I'm almost thirty three years old, and she's sixty four. Like we just now, you know, building this relationship. And and my one of my friends was asking, "Well, how can you forgive her? You know, she wasn't there for you. She wasn't there for your mom. You know, I can't get back those years. No, the thing right, about this thing, right. what can we build on now? Yeah, you know, right, because yeah. if That's I'm a right. if I'm a child." 
saw the guy, you know, and I really yeah. want to walk out forgiveness. How can we build now? That's because right. the Bible says, you know, the Lord throws them to our sins into the sea, and yeah. you know, forgiveness right. and remembers exactly. them no more. Yeah. yeah, she was a horrible mama. She was a horrible grandmother. Right. She was probably just a horrible person overall back in the day. Sure. But now, <laughs> yeah, she's like, new. yeah, like how, yeah. <laughs> like we're gonna, like how can we build on now? I can't get that time back. I'm mm -hmm. not living yeah. in the past. Right. What can we do That's now? Right. What we can do now? You can enjoy your great grandkids. You know, you might be That's inconsistent. Right. You, you right. might be a little bit inconsistent. Well, not a little bit. You are inconsistent with that. But I accept you for what you can give. That's right. I don't expect yeah. no more out of you than what you can give. That's you calling every two weeks. Hey, that's all you that's can give. Right. And that takes maturity yeah. and that takes growth and that takes yeah. true healing because at the yeah. end of the day, like... I'm not, who am I? I am, you know, I am nobody to put you into heaven or hell. Like, sure. I forgive you. I have moved on. Right. You can't be mama. You can't be no, grandma. Right. What can we no. do now? Yeah. Let's build yeah. on the now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what families that's are right. missing, you know, like, whoa, I was molested, you know, not to take anything away from the people who were hurt in their past, but that's like, right. what can we do now? You think he was the only one that was molested? Right. You think he was the only one that, you know, that, that was abandoned? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. you were not. Yeah. That's right. right. What are you going to do now? That's right. What are you going to exactly. do? Exactly. So you're going to mope, exactly. you're going to cry, and you're just yeah. going to keep going in this cycle, like Marcus said, you know, doing the same thing, expecting different results is like insanity. That is. So, insanity. Exactly. That is, exactly. Well, guys, I, I'm, I'm happy to be able to be on the other end over here. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all are probably getting ready to shut off, shut off, so I'm going to get out of the way. It's been good. But we ain't even took no break. Yes, Wanda. We never do, really. It flows so much. Well. Well, my kids were here. They were disrupted. <laughs> <laughs> no, we really appreciate this interaction, and we, we also, if we had enough time, guys, we would like to have more callers to call in so yeah. we can yes. get more questions and answers, but we are getting close to uh, the hour that we're going to have to cut yeah. it off, mm -hmm. but we can always do a part two. We can always, <laughs> yeah. we can always come back and do a, and do a so, part two, and those who are listening on the replay, if there's a, a dire need for us to bring this back again, please uh, leave us feedback or comment or, or something that so we can know what is going on because we want you know to be a help to the community, want to be a help to our our yes. family. Yeah. It's yes. a family affair. 